I've become a student of business relationships. What works? What doesn't? Really understanding their significance and how they can help you grow personally and professionally. You want to fuel the upward spiral that Donatelli talked about? Build remarkable relationships. Make no mistake about it, performance trumps all. You have to be competent, you have to be capable, you have to understand how to articulate your unique value proposition. But relationships create that edge. I was in Dubai several times last year. I'm headed to Barcelona and Portugal next month. And every international trip reiterates that the rest of the world builds relationships first from which they do business. Unfortunately, many of us as North Americans are so focused in the business part that if and only if the business part works, we'll think about building a relationship. Hence the disconnect when we go into environments and they don't look like us, sound like us, or come from our backgrounds. So I ask a lot of senior people, you know a lot of people. Respectfully, so what? How many of them will return your calls and emails within 24 hours? How many of them call you to ask, how you doing? The very foundation of your success heavily depends on the diversity, the quality of the relationships you build, and the investment efforts you choose to make in those relationships. There's a strategic value in relationships. Sociologists will tell you that an average individual can proactively manage about 100 to 150 relationships. Which ones? How do you know? And if you can't invest in everybody equally, how will you then prioritize which relationships you're going to invest in? That your relationship focus determines your direction and that direction will define your destination. The relationships you choose to invest in while you're here and when you go home will determine your 2011 results. You're gonna to have to become very savvy at all the different relationships you manage. One of the misperceptions about relationships that is purely external. Customers, partners, outside of this place. I would submit a big asset for you this next year is gonna become your intra-company relationships. And if you empower the customers to share the good, the bad, and the ugly, including the ugly, what they do is they become evangelists for you. And I would submit to you that evangelism is a new business model. Evangelism is what's going to help you recruit. Evangelism is going to help you get into new markets. Somebody else talking about you, somebody else helping to toot your horn is what's going to help create that pull, personally and professionally. Your prospects aren't these neat little buckets we tend to put them in, but rather a web of relationships. They're very connected. I recently asked the chief financial officer of a $12 billion business, how many clients have you seen in the last six months? Any guesses? I said, respectfully, are you telling me you got your finger on the pulse of this business by looking at a bunch of financials? because one of my mentors drove into me, nothing will ever replace feet on the street. Circle for me strategic, because most people get the first two. They've got personal friends, poker, golf. They got functional friends within the organization. They miss out on strategic relationships who can help you see considerably further down the road. Many understand that relationships are important. Very few embrace and really leverage their significance. The difference between a market leader and a fast follower is your ability to bridge relationship creation with relationship capitalization. What relationships will you choose to invest in proactively, intently, and strategically this coming year?